We thank you, Lord, for the privilege to preach your word and to listen to your word, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that even we are not together physically, but we can worship you in the spirit as one, even from our homes, Lord Jesus. So God, we just want to commit to you this time. We want to commit to you each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So I just want to thank you um, all for watching from home and for waking up early in the morning. And I believe that as we wake up early in the morning, there is an anointing. Why? Because when God encounters people, when we read the book of the prophets, when the day of the Lord comes, the Lord reveals himself. Amen. Since it's the tradition to wake up early on Sunday and seek him, let's all seek him in the morning. Amen. And let's encourage you, those um, whom we know that are at home right now to, to turn on the YouTube and send them the link so that they can be blessed. Amen. Amen. Are we ready to hear the word of God? Y'all can send your amen comments to our YouTube. <laughs> So today what I'm going to share is about how to sustain the fire of God within us. Because the thing is, we will be challenged and I believe this is just the beginning of the challenges that will come. We've been talking about the last days, but I believe that this hour and in this time, God is preparing us. Amen. So right now, even at you... Even as you are at home watching, I want to encourage you to get your paper, get a pen, write down notes. And um, if some of you are watching on your bed, please get up from your bed, go to your living room and sit there. Why? Because we want to honor God. We want to honor His presence. We are not sure how long will it take, but we will preach the Word of God. Amen. So I just want to encourage all of us, even as we are watching from our homes, to continue our journey with Jesus, to continue our walk with God, and to continue worshiping Him. Amen. Amen. So I will anchor this um, sermon in Second Chronicles. Okay, let's turn our Bible. Second Chronicles. Chapter 7. We all know this scripture in verse 14. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. This will be the scripture we are going to study but before we come in that position of asking the Lord forgive our sin, there is a story. There is a process. There is a place where we can ask the Lord as a nation because my brothers and sisters, intercessors must rise up in this hour. Amen. Worshippers must rise up in this hour. Amen. Because before God told Solomon, King Solomon, if my people pray, the temple of Solomon was just finished. They just finished building the temple that was promised to King David. David has been longing, Lord, you are staying in the tent and I'm staying in a castle. I want to make a place for you to dwell. And King Solomon finished it. And before we go there, I just want to um, establish the word of God from um, Many scriptures, so I want to encourage all of us to take down notes because we will go through Bible study this morning. Are we ready to hear the word of God? Amen? Amen. So in, in the Bible, in, in, in the life of King Solomon, as he finished the temple, the presence of God came and all of us are familiar that the Shekinah glory of God came. Amen. How many of us wants the presence of God in our houses? And I believe this is the perfect time um, to be together, to be with the family, and to host the presence of God. Amen? Can we turn our Bible to Romans 12, 1? Let's turn our Bibles to Romans 12, 1. Okay, let's read together. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy... To offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Amen. 
So before we, we, we go further, I want to bring all of us in a place where I am an offering to the Lord. I am um, an altar before Him. Yesterday when we were having um, school of worship, I was sharing about how are we a sacrifice every day. In the school, we've been learning how do we become that very offering God is longing for. Can we just uh, stay in that uh, scripture? And I want us to focus even as we read this. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy. Sometimes we think that I offer to God everything. I gave God everything. I gave him my life. I've surrendered Everything to the Lord, forgetting that it is by the mercy of God that we can surrender. If we can write in our notebooks today, it is because, God's, it is because of God's mercy that I can offer a sacrifice. Amen. It is not because we spent six hours in prayer. It is not because I gave my life to him. Yes, it is true. But do not forget, it is by the mercy if you have your Bibles with you, you can circle that so that we won't forget that it is all about the mercy of Jesus. Amen. It's very interesting that sometimes when we pray, oh, because we prayed things happen, oh, because we prayed people are healed, forgetting that it's all about God's mercy. Amen. Do we become a sacrifice as we read the scripture? I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. I am only able to offer my body to the Lord because of his mercy. Amen. If we can remember things from the Bible, I believe that the word mercy shouldn't be forgotten. Because in the mercy of God, we've been healed, we've been restored, and we are saved because of God's mercy. Amen. To offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Amen. So the topic today that I, I will share um, as we go further is how do we sustain that fire? How, how do we sustain our worship? Especially now around the world. I believe some of you are from another country. Around the world, we have been um, afraid of the virus. We've been afraid that we are locked at home and doing nothing. Please do not think that when we are at home, we cannot do anything. Amen. Because when we are with God, things happen. When we intercede and when we pray, things happen. So I want to unlock to all of us today God's goodness and how do we come in confidence that I am an altar of worship. Amen. So today I want to share with us about how do we offer ourselves daily before the Lord? So I want to share with us the concept of, of God's sacrifice. The sacrifice of God. And then we will study the Old Testament. And then the New Testament. Why is this important? Because the thing is, a lot of us don't understand that God requires a sacrifice. From the Old Testament, there's many sacrifices which we will look through. And in the New Testament, there's also a sacrifice. Amen. How many of us are excited? If you are, you can type in YouTube. I am excited, brother. Amen. So before we can offer our life as a sacrifice, I want all of us to understand this principle. Are we all ready? Can we turn our Bible to Exodus 29, 36? So in the Old Testament, there's an offering of bull. And let's read together. Sacrifice a bull each day as a sin offering to make atonement. Purify the altar by making atonement for it and anoint it to consecrate it. Amen. So in the Old Testament, my brothers and sisters, it's, um, it's something that everyone must have a bull. Everyone must have a lamb. Everyone must have a turtle dove. Everyone must have cattle. 
Why? Because when they are sinning, all of us are sinners. And the purpose of this is to cover, cover our sin. Amen. So there's bull. Let's go to Exodus 29, verse 1 and 3. And this is the ram. All right. This is what you are to do. Consecrate them so they may serve me as priests. Take a young bull and two rams without defect. Verse 3. Put them in a basket and present them in it along with the bull and two rams. So it's the same chapter 29, 1 and 3. So there's a ram sacrifice. Amen. And the verse is, let's turn our Bibles to Numbers chapter 15, verse 11. Are we there? Each bull or ram, each lamb or young goat is to prepare in this manner. To prepare them to be spotless. Okay, we go to Leviticus 7, 37. There's another sacrifice. It's called grain sacrifice. And it's in Leviticus 7, 37. These then are the regulation of the burnt offering, the grain offering, and sin offering, the guilt offering, the ordination offering, and the fellowship offering. Amen. So and as we read the scripture, all these are offered in the Old Testament. And it's offered by the priest and the high priest. We will not go so much in it, but I want all of us to understand that the lifestyle of, of people of God, of the people of God, are always keeping animals. <laughs> if we don't have money to buy a bull, a ram, a dove, or, or a grain, you know, your sin won't be covered. So I want all of us to understand that before all this must be spotless. All these offerings must be pure. All these offerings must be perfect when they offer and come to the temple. Amen. And how many of us, even at home, want to do this again? Again, we've not done it, but how many of us want to revive this? We come to JMK bringing one bull. We come to JMK bringing one cattle. We come to JMK bringing one lamb. Of course, we do not want. Yes? In the New Testament, who is our priest Jesus Jesus Christ he is our priest and it's can we turn our bibles to hebrews 4 13 to 15 nothing in all creation is hidden from god's sight amen everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom he must give account verse 14 Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. Verse 15. For we do not have the high, a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are yet was without sin. Amen. So Jesus became... Our great high priest. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Romans 8, 3. And we've been talking about sacrifice. This is the sacrifice, right? Let's put S. This is the sacrifice. Let's go to Romans 8, 3. For what the law was powerless to do in that it was weakened by the sinful nature God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful men to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in sinful men. Amen. Jesus is our high priest. And Jesus is also the sacrifice. Wow. How many of us we declare, you know, I'm, a, I'm in the priesthood of God, but how many of us want to be a sacrifice? Can we turn to 1 Peter 1, 19? 
with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. Let's, let's just, I'll just write the scripture over here. So as we look here, we will see that Old Testament, we have to offer everything, we have to do everything, we have to do all the, the work, we have to maintain what wh whoever or rather the, the, the animals we are taking care of. Meaning from the morning, you give good food. In the evening, you get, give good food. You shower them. You comb them. You take care of them. But in the New Testament, when Jesus came, he became the ultimate sacrifice for us. If, you, if some of you may ask, um, Brother James, why are you going through this? We already know. Because I want all of us to see the foundation of how we are offering to God a living sacrifice. Because a lot of us do not understand the power of the salvation of Christ. And if some of you are watching and you have not met or rather you have not accepted the Lord, I believe this is your day. As we look here, Jesus fulfilled every single sacrifice. Amen. And as we look here, now that we are in the New Testament, Jesus became the sacrifice. Jesus became the high priest. Romans 12, 1. Offer yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing. Can we go to that scripture? And I want to establish this to us today as we go through the word of God because the thing is, as we are going through uncertainty, I believe God is raising his people. And I'm, I'm very excited to, to share and to pray together with all of us. Romans 12, 1, offer yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing. This is your spiritual act of worship. Since Jesus... Jesus was the forerunner to be a sacrifice and he became the great high priest and we've said, Jesus, be my master, be my savior, be my king. And in, in Genesis, God said, let, let us make man in our own image. And in the New Testament, it says there that we should be like Christ. And being like Christ is becoming a sacrifice. And this is in Romans 12.1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Amen. We want to be like Christ. Be like Christ. Offer ourselves daily. And what happens here? You know, all these, once a year, the people of Israel offer bull. Every feast they offer turtle dove, every um, um, event, they have some offering. And here we are in the New Testament. We've received Jesus Christ from within our hearts without realizing the privilege of offering a sacrifice of worship to God. Amen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, we have an opportunity to offer the Lord sacrifices of praise every single day. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we forget that when I wake up in the morning, I am an offering of praise to my Jesus. Sometimes we forget that Jesus died so that I can be a life full of worship. A life full of praise. So what happens here? Let's continue. I want to draw an altar here. So I'm going to draw an altar. Apologies for the drawing, but this is my best. Yes, let's say this is the altar. Old Testament, New Testament. Last time they put their offering here. The people of Israel, the priests will offer to the altar. And in the New Testament, we do not need to, to have this um, altar. Why? Why? Because what happened, ladies and gentlemen, we ourselves become an altar of worship to him every single day. Amen. Amen. Because we are an offering to the Lord. Can we turn to Romans 12, verse 2? 
We have a responsibility. Verse 2, do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Since we are an offering, and in the book of, um, and in the uh, New Testament, we are also a king and a priest, a royal priesthood, a holy nation set apart by God. Let's go to that. Let's turn to 1 Peter 2, 9. All right, are we there? But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Amen. We, you know, the wonderful thing is all of us saved by grace are called to be a priest, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Means we are becoming like Christ. Amen. We are becoming into the image of God. We are becoming to, to be a person who can offer to the Lord a sacrifices of praise every single day. Amen. If some of us at home and from another nation, we are feeling quarantined because of all these things, brother and sister, look at this. Even at home, you are offering a sacrifice of praise to the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's very exciting because I am no longer a nobody. I am no longer just another man. But as we know Christ more, we become and we turn out to be a, a priest, a holy priesthood. We belong to the priesthood of the great high priest. Amen. Amen. And what is the priest's job? I don't want, I don't want to go deep into the study of priesthood. That's another topic, but I just want us to understand but just to make it short, the, the, the um, responsibility of a priest is to offer sacrifices to God and to make intercession. Lord, forgive us. Forgive our nation. Amen. And we will go into that more deeper as we listen to the word, and I'm very excited to go there. New Testament, Old Testament, right? And this offering will go up. This fragrance will rise up before the throne of God. Meaning to say, brothers and sisters, we are an altar of praise every day. Amen. How many of us are, are full of joy because of this? Amen. And we are not just quarantined at home for nothing. We are staying at home so that we can give offering to the Lord, worship, and tell the Lord, Lord, forgive my nation. Heal my nation. Forgive us. Heal nations. A lot of us are going through um, difficulty, trials, but I believe the word of God will set all of us free. Amen. So this altar, as we offer to the Lord, as we see here, high priest, Jesus is the great high priest, sacrifices, Jesus became all of these, because Jesus became all of these, Jesus is inside our heart, because Jesus is inside our heart, we become an offering to the Lord, amen. And because of that, because I am an offering, I'm, I also become a, a part of the royal priesthood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, how many of us are glad? I don't know about you, but I am full of joy because God has made us to be like him. Amen. Let's turn our Bibles to 2 Chronicles chapter 7. So before we go deep in that, I'll just um, have a, a very quick summary of what's going on um, the, um, in, in this scripture the context of what we are um, sharing about. So in verse 5, um, oh, sorry, in chapter 5 of Second Chronicles, Solomon 
finished the temple. He finished the building that has been promised to King David. And in chapter 5, verse 2, then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the leaders of the fathers' houses of the people of Israel in Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. So in Zion, the temple was built. Amen. And then let's go to verse 13. And it was the duty of the trumpeters, the Levites went in already, and singers to make themselves heard in unison in praise and thanksgiving to the Lord. And when the song was raised with trumpets and cymbals and other music, musical instruments in praise to the Lord, and they sang, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. The house, the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. How many of us want our houses to be filled with the glory of God? Amen. If that is you and you're sitting at home, say amen. <laughs> Agree to it. Why? Because, Lord, we are building you a house so that you can dwell. And then in chapter 6, verse 1, Then Solomon said, The Lord has said that he would dwell in thick darkness, but I have built you an exalted house, a place for you to dwell in forever. Amen. So he finished the work. He was faithful doing the work. And after that, Solomon started praying. He prayed for the nation. He prayed for Israel. We can read it for ourselves when we go back, or rather, you're at home. <laughs> you're at home, you can read it later. <laughs> I want to read this in, in chapter 6, verse 28. Solomon prayed this, the glory of God, remember, the glory of God was already in the temple. He said, if there is famine in the land, if there is pestilence or blight or mildew or locust or caterpillar in their enemies, besiege them in the land at their gates. Whatever plague, whatever sickness there is, whatever prayer, plea is made by any man or by all your people, Israel, each knowing his own affliction and his own sorrow and stretching out his hands towards this house. Then hear from heaven your dwelling place and forgive and render to each whose heart you know according to all his ways. For you, you only know the hearts of the children of mankind that they may fear you and walk in your ways all the days that they live in the land that you gave to our fathers. I'll stop there for a while. So when we look at it, when the glory of God came, King Solomon interceded. Are, are, are we getting this, my brothers, my sisters? King Solomon interceded when God's presence came. Likewise, I want to encourage all of us. When God comes in our houses, even in this hour, even as we are, even as we are worshiping God just now in, in the house, and after this, let's intercede. Let's intercede. Amen. In verse 6, um, chapter 6, verse 41, let's jump there. Now arise, O Lord God, and go to your resting place. You and the ark of your might, let your priest, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation. And let your saints rejoice in your gladness. O Lord God, do not turn away the face of your anointed one. Remember your steadfast love for David, your servant. Amen. Having the understanding, uh, we went through this, my brothers and sisters, so that we see the picture. 
When they build the Ark of the or rather, when they build the Temple of Solomon, they offer. Okay, let's go to chapter 7, verse 5. Oh no, verse 4. So we have a we have a better picture. Verse 4. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifice before the Lord. King Solomon offered as a sacrifice. 22,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. Okay, let's come back to here. You see, just now we've built up the offering. How many did King Solomon offer? 22,000 oxen, 120,000 sheep. Wow, how many of us can offer the Lord that much? <laughs> can you imagine the smell? <laughs> <laughs> of these animals and they burn everything and God's presence came amen the cloud of God came so I want and I want all of us to look here now Jesus is Jesus a better sacrifice indeed amen is Jesus a pure sacrifice yes Jesus did not cover the sin he washed all sin. Amen. And because of this, my brothers and sisters, because of this, my brothers and sisters, we do not need to offer 22,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep because we have Jesus Christ. Don't you think that God can come any day, any time in your houses right now? Don't we think that because of my Jesus, I have the right to ask the Lord, Lord, come, Lord Jesus. I want to commune with you. I want to worship you. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Don't we think that Jesus will not come? If all of these are so good and God come, how much more when we have the knowledge of God in us, that Jesus is the high priest, he's the sacrifice, and I am a sacrifice to him, knowing that by his mercy, I can offer myself, by his mercy, I am part of his holy priesthood. Are we following? Because my brothers and sisters, we forget the power that God has given to us and the privilege that is given to us. Amen? Amen? That's very exciting. We will go a little more, a little more deeper, all right? So as King Solomon um, established the temple and, and offered to the Lord all the sacrifices, the Levites, the priests, they all sang to God. Chapter 7, verse 1. Let's go very quickly. As soon as Solomon finished his prayer, fire came down from heaven and consumed and burned offering and sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you see, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, because of God's because God is pleased. Can you imagine? If a person can become an altar, if a person can be an offering to God, how much more all of us, even you're watching at home, and there'll be, I'll share a revelation that the Lord told me this morning that will excite us and will stir our hearts. Amen. And in verse 2, and the priests could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory of God filled the Lord's house. Verse 3, when all the people of Israel saw the fire come down and the glory of the Lord on the temple, they bowed down with their faces on the ground on the pavement and worshipped and gave thanks to the Lord, saying, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. I think this is their favorite line. For he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And you know, when we sing to God of who he is, God is so pleased. You know, a father who, who loves the children so much, 
And if a, and if a child tells the father, Dad, thank you for always giving me things. Thank you, Daddy, for spending time with me. I know you're busy, yet you spend time with me. You know, the father will feel so happy. And even the moms. When the children say, Mom, thank you for always cooking for me. Um, thank you for doing things for me, even without me telling you. You are telling your parents who they are. And because of that, they are so pleased, right? How much more Jesus? How much more God? Therefore, in the scripture, we can see that when all people of Israel saw the fire come down and the glory of the Lord on the temple, they bowed down with their faces on the ground, on the pavement and worship and gave thanks to the Lord, saying, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And I hope all of us, and I encourage some of us who are in other countries as well, if you are going through hard times, especially in the current situation we are in, fear not. Because his steadfast love endures forever. And he is good. Ah. Saying this, my brothers and sisters, makes my heart so tender before him. Why? Because all of this is done for you and I. It's done for you and I, just for us to come close to God. Amen. Amen. And let's go to chapter 7, verse 11. Let's go to verse 11. So when everything is done, when everything is finished, worship and all, and, and God gave them success, and God gave his presence, and in verse 11, thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house, all that Solomon had planned to do in the house of the Lord and in his own house, he successfully accomplished. Can we underline that in our Bible? Successfully accomplished. Because a lot of us, my brothers and sisters, we want the blessings, we want the presence, we want the anointing, we want the cloud of glory. But I want to ask all of us, have we successfully accomplished the things God wants us to do? Have we successfully accomplished the very goal and the very calling we are called for in this season? And that's a question for us as individuals. That's a question for you and I, because the thing is, we want God's glory, we want, we want God's anointing, but have we accomplished successfully the calling of God for you and I? All of these are done. A lot of us are praying um, this scripture. If my people who are called by my name, that verse is, is after all of these. After the preparation, after the worship, after the Shekinah glory, after the cloud. After they all sang. Yes. And a lot of us are skipping all these, Lord, if my people pray, you've said in your word, but we didn't read the earlier scripture that we have to give God all the glory, all the honor, and give him all the credit and tell him, because of your mercy, I can pray today. Because of your mercy, I can say, Lord, you've said in your word, if my people who are called by my name, and thank God we are called by his name, Jesus Christ. Amen. How many of us are learning something today? And in verse 12, then the Lord appeared to Solomon. If you're writing your notes, you can write there in chapter, uh, in verse 12, Solomon encountered God personally. Without forgetting, ladies and gentlemen, we have a responsibility. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon in the night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and I have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Because of the sacrifice of Jesus, my brothers and sisters, God made us his temple. Amen. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are the temple of the Most High God. Amen. 
And he said in verse 13, When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain or command the locust to devour the land or send pestilence among my people. Sounds very current. As if all these have been sent. God is not evil. God is good. But sometimes he allows all these to come. Why? So that his people will humble themselves and pray. And in verse 14, finally, finally we are here. If my people who are called by my name and humble themselves and pray and seek my face, underline the word seek. Seek means it's active. It's progressive. It's not passive. It's not lazy. Seek means I am seeking the Lord because I have not found him yet. Amen. Amen. We seek the Lord because we want to find him. And some of us who, have, who are married and, and, and those getting married, we, we find ways to have time with our loved ones. We find ways to meet up with, the peop with people important to us. Why? Because we're, we, we are seeking them. I want to spend time with my brother. I want to spend time with my sister. I want to spend time with my spouse. And we are so excited. Amen? And this is the very same thing that we must have the same longing. If my people are called by my name, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. And number two is turn from your wicked ways. Again, it's active. Why? You turn. God will not turn you. Amen? Turn from your wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. I think, ladies and gentlemen, we have an assignment as God's royal priesthood. We ought to intercede for our nation. If some of you are watching from um, other, um, different countries other than Singapore, I, I, I encourage you to be an intercessor of your land. As an intercessor, we, we, we don't profess or we, we, we are not lifting up the name of intercessor and, and even be proud of it. Why? Because it's a holy calling. Jesus is a chief intercessor. And when we are an intercessor, we identify our, ourselves as the same position as Christ or rather working together with him. So an intercessor is a person who's working closely with God. Not lifting up our ministry, we are the intercessor. Because an intercessor must be humble. An intercessor must know how to anguish with God. An intercessor must know that before I pray to the Lord, I must cleanse myself. And I must identify myself with the nation I am praying for. Amen. And in verse 15, now my eyes will be open and, and my ears attentive to the prayer that is made in this place. Amen. Which means God is saying that as we offer to the Lord sacrifices of praise daily and even at home with our family, God is saying, now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer that is made in this place. Because you've honored me. Because you've give, given me all the glory. In the midst of your struggle, you're telling, Lord, glory be to you. In the midst of your circumstances, in the midst of some of us quarantined, some of us are going through this, 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 this worry. God is saying to us, now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer that is made in this place. Because now, you are no longer outsiders. Now, you are or an altar of worship. Amen. Amen. Verse 16, For now I have chosen and consecrated this house that my name may be there forever. Amen. Jesus gave us his name forever. Amen. We are no longer strangers, but we are identified as God's people. Amen. My eyes and my heart will be there for all time. Verse 17, and as for you, if you will make, if you will walk before me as David, your father walked, 
doing according to all that I have commanded you to keeping my statutes and my rules. Then I will establish your royal throne as I covenanted with David, your father, saying, you shall not lack a man to rule Israel. Amen. Means God will establish us in the midst of all these problems, though we are going through this struggle, yet as we honor God, as we have this knowledge of Him, we will take hold and tell the Lord, Lord, come, have your way in me. And God is saying, I will establish you. Amen. However, God is giving us a warning. God is giving us a warning in verse 19. But if you turn aside and forsake my status and my commandments that I have set before you and go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will pluck you up from my land and I have given you that I have given you and this house that I have consecrated for my name, I will cast out of my sight and I will make it a proverb and a byword among all peoples and all this house which was exalted everyone passing by with will be astonished and say why has the Lord done thus to this land and to this house then they will say because they abandoned the Lord the God of their fathers who brought them out of the land of Egypt and laid hold on other gods and worshipped them and served them. Therefore, he has brought all this disaster on them. That is the warning God is given, giving to us, my brother, my sister. If we turn away from the Lord, he will turn away from us. He is faithful. He is faithful, but we have a responsibility. Amen. Yes, a lot of us may be staying at home and, and for this um, period. But I want to encourage all of us, God is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. And God told me this morning as I'm, I'm praying, Lord, give me, a, give me a word for the church, for your people. And God told me, James, when... You set an altar of worship. When my people set an altar of worship, do you know that a nation can become a temple of God? Because when I read about Solomon, when I read about King David, when God's presence come, and when he dwell in the place where they prepared for the Lord, they never lose. Amen. They always win. They win battles. They've established the land. And even kings around the world came to Solomon and gave offerings to the Lord. Gave him gold, silver, precious metal. Why? Because the presence of God is there. Amen. Which means, my brothers and sisters, as we are staying at home, we are committed to prayer. We are committed to intercede. We are committed to sit with the Lord. Lord, have mercy in this nation. I believe God, God's mercy is still in our nation. God is still moving. God is moving. Yes, we may have all these struggles, but I want to challenge all of us. Let's pray together. I want to challenge all of us. Since the Lord had made us to be a sacrifice Let's intercede. Can we go again to Romans chapter 2 verse, ah, verse uh, sorry, 12 verse 2. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. This is our responsibility, my brothers and sisters. Do not be conformed by the, the, to this world, but, by, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. My brothers and sisters, if we are worrying as the world worries, we are not taking responsibility to what God has given to us. Amen. Because we are God's people. If God has set me apart, if God has set us apart, we should not conform the mind with the things of the world. We should not be like the world, rather. But 
we should be transformed as we renew our mind. Why? Because we have to subject the mind. Yes, the heart is subjected to God, but I want to ask all of us, is your mind subjected to the Lord? Do we worry as how the world worries? Do we fear as the world is so frightened right now? Because if we do, we are disappointing God who's given us everything, who's done all of this so that we can come near to him. Amen. That by testing, you may discern what is the will of God. I think it's a good test for us. Amen. That as a nation, we pray, Lord, Lord, protect our nation, heal our land, give wisdom to our government. Give your godly counsel to our leaders. Amen. And let's not forget our heroes, the doctors, the nurses. Because they, they are a shortage of people and they have been working tirelessly. You believe me or not, some of them have been uh, kicked out from their houses because they are afraid that they, they'll get affected by the virus. So I want all of us to not be selfish. Let's think of others. Because as an intercessor, as a priest, a priest does not care about himself. Now we are part of the royal priesthood. What we care for is what God is telling us. Amen. Amen. And today I, I feel in my spirit that let's pray. Because God is raising up his intercessors. God is raising up his people for this, this hour, for this time. And some of us may be doing cell groups at home, group of 10 or less than that. Who knows? Maybe if God grow us as a house ministry, maybe God can open houses more so that we can gather to worship him. We may be limited, but we are one in the spirit. Amen. So in conclusion, even as you are sitting at home, I want to encourage each one of us to consider all this. Consider our position in Christ. Consider our right standing in Christ, to consider that I am now an altar of worship to the Lord every single day. That I am no longer a stranger, I am no longer a nobody, but because of Jesus, his finished work, I now can become a temple together with my brothers and sisters, though we may not be together, but we are one in the Spirit and can you imagine in, in our nation alone, you know, churches are, we, we can't gather together and we understand that. But can you imagine all of us in one day, Sunday morning, all of us are praying together, Lord, have your way. And I want to refer to, to Abraham. When, when, when the Lord told Abraham, I will judge Sodom and Gomorrah, and Abraham said, Lord, if there's 50 righteous, will, they, will you spare that land? And God said, yes. Lord, what if there's 40? What if there's 30? What, what if there's 20? What if there's 10? And the Lord says, yes, I will be merciful. I will spare them. And my brothers and sisters, I want to encourage us. Yes, we are praying for our nation, but let's pray for the nations of the world. I believe that God is raising up a lot more people around the world to cover. In the Bible, it says that darkness shall cover the earth, but the grace of God will abound. Arise and shine, for your light has come, for the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Amen. So can we just stand even? You are at home. Let's stand to our feet. Let's honor the Lord. If some of us are still in bed watching, I encourage you to stand. Let's honor God because God is here. God is at your house. God is standing there even as you are watching right now. Even as you are listening from your home, 
I believe that God will touch us. Though we may be few, but the Lord says, and, and as Abraham asked the Lord, if there is ten righteous, Lord, will you spare the land? The Lord said yes. The Lord said yes. And how much more in the nation of Singapore and in the nation you are in today, I believe there's more righteous people. And I am calling forth the righteous to rise up. If you may ask me, Brother James, how do I know I am righteous? Just look at Jesus Christ. His finished work made us righteous. Because God has made me righteous, I can now intercede. Amen. And I want to read this to us one more time. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon in the night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and I have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people. And God said, if my people who are called by my name utter your name right now, my brothers and sisters. Oh, James is called by God. Brother John is called by God. Brother Jekko is called by God. All of us are called by God. Will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal the land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer that is made in this place. So can we pray right now? Oh Father, even as we are saying at home right now, watching from YouTube, Lord, we thank you that we have this platform to be together, to be as one, to hear your word and to pray together. So Father, here we are, your children. We humble ourselves before you, knowing that it is because of your mercy that we can come and intercede. It is because of your grace and your favor, Father, that we can come before your presence to be drawn closer to you. So Lord, here we are as a nation. Lord, have mercy on us. Here we are, Lord Jesus, representing Singapore, representing the nations of the world. Father, forgive us. Have mercy to those who are going through struggles today, Lord Jesus. Some of them got nothing to eat because they got no work. Father, provide for them. Can you just stand up from your homes and pray right now? Lord, even right now we pray for the children, Lord God. You have said in your word, out of the mouth of babes, Lord, praise will rise up. Even against the enemy. Oh Father, here we are. Here we are, your people crying out to you. We are nothing without you. Oh Ramoshikara Baba Sandoromosundorobose. So Father, right now we ask, Lord, have your way in our nation. Lord, we know, Lord Jesus, that your hand is still upon Singapore. Father, we ask and pray, have mercy upon us. Forgive our sin in this nation. Heal our land, Lord Jesus. Oh, let your kingdom come, let your will be done. Let's just sing this and Jesus reign, reign in our hearts, reign in our soul, you and you alone, Jesus, over this place, over this power. Kingdom come. Let your kingdom come.
song again, my brothers and sisters, but have our, our nation in our mind and in our heart. Even as you are watching from another nation, can you have your nation in your heart singing as a representative of Christ? Jesus reign. Oh, reign in our heart, in the nation's heart, in the nation's soul. governments, Lord Jesus. Reign in our household, Lord God. As King Solomon built you a temple, Father, we've built you a house, Lord. Churches in Singapore, Father, built you a house for you to dwell. And we ask, Lord Jesus, will, would you, Lord, build your house in each and everyone's household today? Oh, God, have mercy. Have mercy, Lord Jesus, to the pastors who've been tirelessly working for your kingdom. For the staff of, of every churches who've been working so hard right now, Lord, bless each and every one of them. Even those, God, who lost their jobs because of this problem, Lord Jesus, this trial, we ask, let them see you, Lord Jesus. Provide for them. Because, Lord, you've said in your word, Lord God, after your people offered sacrifices of praise, you came, you came and said, if my people will humble themselves who are called by my name, you will heal their land and forgive their sin. So here we are, Lord, crying out to you. Oh, Jesus, have mercy. Father, we just want to thank you for the healing of this land. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you've heard our prayer. We thank you, Lord Jesus, and we declare that the latter house shall be greater than the former house. Because that's what you said in your word, Lord Jesus, when darkness and thick darkness cover the earth, your light will shine and your grace will abound. So right now, Lord, we declare in the name of Jesus, arise and shine for your light has come. For the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. So right now, Father, let your light shine from within us. That there'll be no darkness, no virus, no sickness shall enter our houses. But your glory will emanate from every household called by your name. So right now, Lord Jesus, do your will, Lord God. And even as we are praying, the Lord is saying to us today that my son, my daughter, this test will not prolong for a long time, but this is just a preparation for in few years' time, a greater test will come. So prepare your hearts Prepare your heart's anchor in my word. Find your foundation in my love and in my word. Because my word is a solid rock. It will never fail you. As you form your foundation in me, I will establish my kingdom in your household. So do not fear. Do not fear. For I am looking into all. Into all into all 
all of your worries, of your concern, and even your future, I hold it. So hold fast of my promises, for I will not let you go unless you turn away from me. Lord, we thank you for your word. Your promises are yes and amen. We thank you, Lord Jesus, once again, that even in this time of circumstance, we can still gather together as your people. We can still worship together as one. So, Father, we ask, Lord, that your kingdom come, that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Even at this time when you're at home right now watching, can you lift up your hands to the Lord? And so the Lord, Lord, yours is the kingdom, the glory, the honor, the power forever. You deserve it all. We bless your holy name. You are worthy to be praised, oh God. Oh, we give you glory. You are holy, you are mighty. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty. Oh, we thank you. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' name.